Hi everyone, it's Bibi Cameron here. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing how to use the die set in the Tony Craft Kit number 20 and the contents of the kit. With this kit, you get a small bottle of Nubo Drops, this beautiful holographic sequence, a new color of Nubo Chimmer Powder called Falling Leaves, Nubo Mica Mist, a twine spool, a paper pad with 24 sheets in eight different designs. The colors in this paper pad are from the new Tonic Studios color collection called Woodland Walk. This paper is 160 grams, so it's quite thick. And you will be able to make with this paper boxes or any other 3D project. In this kit, you will also get texture cardstock, pearlescent cardstock, traditional cardstock, and mirror cardstock in this glossy finish and also satin finish. The die set in this kit has 14 pieces and is designed to create a beautiful box. You will also get a stamp set that coordinates with some of the dies in the die set. For example, this little dragonfly there, you can stamp it and then die cut it using the dies in the kit. And the same happens with the little ladybird there. These triangular stamps here coordinates perfectly with some areas of the box or the die, so you can use them to stamp those areas, but you can also use them for card making. There are another two stamps in this set, a very generic sentiment and this little bow here that I think it coordinates with this die here that is to create a little tag. Now I'm going to put the die set on my table so I can show you the pieces a little bit better. These two square dies here, one is slightly smaller than the other one, are designed to coordinate with any of the six intricate square dies you see there on my table to easily create decorative panels for the sides of the box. You can use those dies for card making, to make tags, for any other project as well. Okay, I'm going to put a box together and I'm going to use an A4 sheet of cardstock included in the kit to die cut it twice using this large die. So here I have the two main pieces to put my box together and I'm going to add double-sided tape in these areas here that are little flaps like in the bottom of the box and at the sides of the box. And that's all I have to do with that double-sided tape. Next, I have to fold all over the scoring lines. This is the part that is going to take a little bit more of time because this box has a special shape. It's not a normal square box. So I take my time, it's not more than three minutes, and I just use my hands to fold all over those scoring lines. At the top here, all I do is to try to bring the paper together to give shape to the paper and also to break the fibers of the paper. And I'm going to do this very gentle, like, like that. You see just that beautiful shape just there? And I haven't finished. So the next thing, we are going to bring this corner towards the center of the paper, and we are going to bend the paper in such a way that it's going to get that curve shape. That is not a line, it's like a curve, a circular shape, or an oval shape. I don't know how to say that in English but you are going to do this with your fingers. Just push the paper and give it shape. And you are going to do exactly the same with the two panels of the box. And I found that this pearlescent cardstock is super easy to fold and it will allow you to create sharp scoring lines. Like you can see the perfect shape of this box. I also use the die with other paper qualities and this was my favorite. So when I finish folding all the scoring lines, I remove the backing of the double-sided tape and I'm going to stick these panels together. 
I have to make sure that this is perfectly aligned and that's it. And I'm going to remove the backing uh, paper from the double-sided adhesive here. And I'm just going to fold the paper like so and bring the other side just like that to make sure that my paper is perfectly aligned and it's super easy to adhere the box that way. I'm not going to stick the top bit of the box. I'm going to leave it like that because that's going to allow me to move the paper later on if I have to. I'm going to remove the backing paper of the double-sided tape in the bottom of the box just to adhere this part here, like so. I'm making sure that the box keep the shape, and then I'm going to glue this other flap there. Hmm, and I just noticed that I made a small mistake. You see the bottom of the box, you should not be able to see the flaps of the box there. So I should glue the bottom of the box differently, I knew that, but when you are filming a video, you are paying attention to so many different things that you might make mistakes like this. Completely easy to fix, but I'm going to show you here how to do it in the right way. So you need to put the hexagonal flap inside the box like that, or towards the inside of the box, and then glue on top the small flaps, just like that. Then your box is going to have a pretty button inside and also outside. And it's a very silly detail, but that's the kind of details that matters in paper craft. Okay, now I'm going to get back to my other box and I'm going to use my hands again to fold the paper towards the inside of the box, just like that. And all I have to do here is to add a piece of twine or ribbon to keep this box closed. You can make this box in any color. I found this box to be beautiful just as it is. But of course, I'm going to show you how to use the decorative dies to step this box design a little bit more. For now, this is the very basic box. It measures three inches and a half by four inches and a half tall. Beautiful. I really love this box. So let's grab these intricate die cuts. So you see there, you can use the square solid dies to die cut a piece of paper, and then you can glue on top one of the intricate decorative dies. These intricate dies doesn't cut around the edge of the paper so that you need to use them together with the square frame die. And you get there six completely different designs. So that will allow you to create straight away six different box designs. And because they don't cut the edge, you also get versatility. You can die cut a piece of cardstock several times using these dies to create a die cut background. You can also make tags, or die cut the side panels of different boxes you might be creating. You can also use the intricate die cut alone and it will look like if the paper were embossed there. I really like this style. You can also use the dies to cut directly the side panels of the box, but I would prefer not to do that because this box has a lot of folding and it might be a little bit tricky, but of course you can do that as well. Another thing you can do is to use an intricate die cut with the two different square frame dies you get in the kit to cut different cardstock colors. I'm going to explain you that a little bit better here. So I die cut the same intricate detail using the same die plus different square frame dies to get something like this. So that you will still have that intricate detail showing the paper of the box and you will also get that beautiful lagered frame in that dimension. And once you have the six panels for your box, you can just glue them on the box like that. You can also create a small tag using the small dies in the kit, and that will look super, super cute. So this is the box finish, and I'm going to play some music while I finish this other box as well.
I'm really loving this Berlesque cardstock color and I only got the sheet that it was included in the kit, but I'm sure I'm going to be ordering more in the brand new Tonic Studios online shop. And I also have some wonderful news for you because after more than 17 years in the market, Tonic Studios is finally opening the online shop to everyone. They only used to sell to retailers. So from now and onwards, you can buy your favorite Tonic products from your favorite retailers, or you can also visit the brand new Tonic Studios online shops. And the links are going to be in the video description. Okay, I wanted to show you another option you have with the kit. You can also use the handmade paper included in the kit to make a box like this one. And I really think that this box will be a fantastic packaging for chocolate truffles or a small sweeties. Folding the paper is going to be a little bit tricky because it's flimsy and it's very soft. But the finishing of this paper is just perfect for that purpose. So if you are in the bakery industry or if you like to make small chocolates or sweeties, this might be the perfect packaging solution for those. Tonic Studios offer this paper in many different colors. This is just one sample. And I just wanted to show you how beautiful that box looks when you use that kind of paper as well. Okay, now I'm going to share with you another idea. This was only a draft project and because I wanted to use the paper pad in the kit, I'm going to do it this way. But you might be able to use a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock and you will be able to use a partial die cutting technique to do this differently. So I'm going to grab four sheets of this paper and I'm going to place the die like so on that paper. So this hexagonal part it's not going to be on the paper. So it's not going to cut that part of the paper. And I got already my four pieces here. All I have to do is to cut these flats off two of these pieces of paper. And I'm going to glue those pieces of paper together. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two that has the little flaps at the bottom so that I can paste this like so. You can do this in many different ways and of course you will see uh, all the seams of the paper which is not so nice. But then when I was putting this together, I thought that it was pretty easy to cover that up. I wasn't gluing anything perfectly. I just wanted to see how this box might look if I finish it. Just to give you a general idea of how this will look if I put two boxes together. So you will have in both ends that beautiful shape. And after gluing everything together, I then use uh, my hands or my fingers to give shape to all those scoring lines. It didn't took long and I found that very relaxing. I really like to move my hands and fold paper. So I really like that stuff. And when I finished this, I was surprised because I really like this box. It looks like a huge candy or a huge chocolate. So it made me think that this would be perfect for children's parties. I'm going to cover up that seam in the center of the box and I'm going to use a paper to create a band. I'm going to wrap this around the box like so and I just glue these two ends together. And then I'm also going to add a tag here. Completely improvised, I'm going to use some a scallop a circle dies and also a circle die and I'm going to embellish this with whatever I have in the kit but of course the sky is the limit you can add anything on top of this and it fit two surprise eggs inside so you can also use this for Easter I really like this idea and that's all for today I hope you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel and visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration I'm on Instagram, Pinterest, and I have a Facebook group to share ideas and inspiration as well. Find the links in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.